In this video tutorial, we are going to show you how to create a daylight setup for an interior scene. Here is the interior scene that we are going to work with. The scene is very simple without any materials applied to it. Let's start with a quick tip. When setting up the lighting in your scene, you don't need the final materials. You can have V-Ray ignore your final materials by using the Override Materials feature. The Override Materials feature will allow you to assign one color to all of the objects in your scene. The rendering speed will be faster and you can focus your attention on setting up the lighting. To enable this feature, open the V-Ray options by clicking on the Option icon on the V-Ray toolbar. Then, go to the Global Switches tab, enable Override Materials, and change the color to a value of 128, which is a medium gray. Let's render the scene. Since the entire scene has only one material, the rendering time is faster than if V-Ray had to calculate a variety of complex materials. The Override Materials feature will help you quickly set up the main illumination in your scene. Please note that when you are rendering the scene with your final materials, you may have to fine-tune your lighting setup to achieve your desired result. So far, we are using the default illumination settings of V-Ray. To set up the daylight for this interior scene, we will focus on using the V-Ray Sun and Sky system as well as the V-Ray physical camera. Notice that the scene is very dark. The next step is to correct the exposure of the scene. While you are setting the illumination, it is very useful to change some parameters to speed up your rendering time for testing purposes. For an interior scene, the best GI solution is Irradiance Map as your primary engine and Light Cache as your secondary engine. Go to the Indirect Illumination tab. Review your settings to make sure that you are using these two GI engines. Change the Irradiance Map settings to low quality. You can use minus 3 for the minimum rate and minus 2 for the maximum rate. Also, be sure that Show Calculation Phase and Show Direct Light options are enabled. On the Light Cache tab, change the subdivision settings to a value of 500. Now we are ready to adjust the exposure of the physical camera. Click on the Camera tab on the V-Ray options. The V-Ray physical camera has many of the same settings as a real-world camera. So, there are several ways to control the exposure or brightness of your image. In this tutorial, we will focus on the film and shutter speed settings. The default film speed value is too low for an interior scene. Lower film speed values will produce darker images, while higher values produce brighter images. So, we will increase the film speed value to 400. Let's render the scene. Increasing the film speed makes the film more sensitive to light. We now have a brighter rendering than before, but the image is still very dark. To increase the brightness of the image, let's change the shutter speed value to 30. In photography, the shutter speed option represents the time that the shutter remains open when you are taking a picture. Lower values produce brighter images, while bigger values produce darker images. Let's render the scene. Notice that there are very bright areas of the image, and you are not able to see the sky in the background. We can use color mapping controls to resolve this problem. In the V-Ray options, go to the Color Mapping tab and switch from Reinhardt to HSV Exponential. Make sure that the multipliers are set to 1. This HSV Exponential color mapping method will preserve the color hue and saturation, and you will avoid having overly bright areas in your renderings. Let's render the scene and examine the rendering. The procedural sky texture is now visible, and there are no overly bright areas in the rendering. The exposure of the rendering is also much better. Remember, due to the low GI settings that we are using, you will have splotches in the rendering. You can also notice that the sun is producing shadows that have a very sharp edge. This is not very realistic and does not happen in the real world. To fix this problem, go to the Environment tab, located in the V-Ray Options. Click the M near the GI color setting. Then increase the Sun's size value to 3. This option controls the softness of the shadows. 
you can now make a region render to see the result of the sun shadows. Notice that we now have very soft shadows. We have one more problem that needs to be fixed. If you take a close look at this chair, it seems to be floating in the air. This effect happens when objects do not have very good contact shadows. The shadows of the chairs are produced by indirect light. It is very difficult for any rendering engine to create nice shadows using indirect light. Our goal is to have the shadows produced by direct light that is coming through the windows. We can easily solve this by using an important feature of the V-Ray light called Light Portal. With this option enabled, V-Ray knows to cast additional direct light in the direction that your V-Ray light is facing. To do this, we have to create a rectangular light behind the windows and enable the Light Portal feature. You don't have to worry about any of the V-Ray light settings in this case because V-Ray will use the lighting information from the environment. These lights will not contribute to the brightness of your scene. Instead, we will have direct light coming through the windows that will produce better shadows. As you can see, the lights are already placed in the scene. The light position and size does not have to be perfect, and you can use one light to cover two windows. The most important thing is that the lights are outside of the windows and pointing to the interior of our space. Let's render the scene. Notice that we have better shadows from the chairs, and we now have more definition in all the details of the scene. We still have a lot of noise in our image, but that is only due to the low quality GI settings we used to speed up our rendering times. For the final rendering, we are going to increase the GI and the anti-aliasing settings. Go to the Irradiance Map tab, located on the V-Ray options, and increase the min rate to minus 3 and the max rate to 0. Now, on the Light Cache tab, increase the subdivisions to 1000. For high quality renderings, Adaptive DMC is the best anti-aliasing solution. On the Anti-Aliasing tab, be sure that you have set Adaptive DMC as your anti-aliasing method. Then, increase the max subdivisions to 10 and decrease the threshold value to 0 0.005. Next, go to the DMC Sampler tab and decrease the noise threshold to 0 0.005. Finally, increase the resolution of the rendering to have a look at our results. Let's render the scene. Our rendering is now much higher in quality. The noise and splotches are gone, and we have very nice shadows throughout the scene. As you can see, this is a very simple approach for creating a daylight setup for an interior scene. Using these techniques, you can quickly light your interior scenes and create great looking images like this.